let the council know that they should watch this meeting so that they'll get a sense of where your concerns were. I'd be happy to do that. And I think it'd be important for them to hear this. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Uh, Scott? And I'd also like to ask that if there is such a specific uh, tunnel vision purview of this commission, that maybe we get told that official opinion by the city prior to the meeting so that we can, I mean, it would essentially my, my research could have been done with, with a more focused lens. And I would have probably had far more questions like maybe Barbara had before the meeting to make sure I truly understood uh, what I can and cannot do as a commissioner and to, um, so that, that's what I'd love to see in the future is to know more about what we can and cannot do as a commission in regards to the decisions we make. Well, and Scott, I mean, I, you know, I, I appreciate your frustration. Um, you know, our, the findings that Jed has recommended include reference to the conference of plan consistency of this proposal and also um, specific criteria in our code that are supposed to be met for something to proceed. And so, like Greg said, we can always um, conclude as a body that the proposal that's been put before us does not meet that bar, you know, on any project. And I think some of the things that you kind of started this conversation on that some of us picked up on, you know, maybe bring in, bring that into some question. Um, and so, you know, we always have the ability to say, we do not believe that the uh, proposal that's before us is consistent with the conference of plan goals and policies and the four or five criteria. Um, the, the problem with the, in, in my mind, the problem with this particular issue is that the, like we've talked about, the, it's, it's not black and white, right? This fee assessment is a balance and, and it seems difficult for us. It would be difficult for us as a body to find like the language to, to make a finding that that balance is not right. It's, it's such a complex, the implications of this are so far, like, you know, the fingers go out so far um, and our, and the way our, our comp plan is written, um, it can be, you know, it can be leveraged in any direction for any opinion um, and, and try and justify it. Just, it, it's incredibly complex. It's complex. I'm having a hard time thinking how we could make a conclusion that, that this wasn't consistent um, without doing what you're talking about, which is a ton of research, right? Which is where the tabling comes in. Like, you know, the policy is uh, to work to provide consistency between the district's capital facilities plan and the city's comprehensive plan. And being here on the, uh, the immediacy of, of a meeting uh, to be able to truly argue whether that's being met is difficult uh, without space in between the conversation. Yeah. I, I, I tend to agree. Jed, thought on this? Yeah, I was just thinking that in terms of like, you know, there's there's going to be kind of questions of how the money is gained in order to pay for the public schools. And so we've got this, you know, this impact fee um, that is applied to a certain thing. But if we were to take that out and put, put that equivalent $500,000 or whatever it is and and acquire that money in a different way. It's like, I would just be curious if like how, you know, how does that affect the poor less? And is it distributed to the wealthy more? Or is it basically we're just packaging it in a different way? And it's just, it's all coming out of the same pool anyway. Um, so I guess, you know, it's like we can look at it and say that, yes, the, the cost of development does get passed on to the renter in, in a rental situation, because um, you know we see that all the time with with projects. But if it were just a you know some other means to gather funding, um, is it just really coming out of, out of the same pockets? Yeah, that's a good point. If if that five hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is 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 funded through a bond rather than impact fees, 
um, the property owner is paying more in property taxes. And if it's a rental, they're going to pass that on to their renters. But it would be distributed across a much broader segment of the population. Uh, you know, I mean, we have how many thousands of taxpayers do we have who would absorb that? So the cost per individual would be lower than, uh, say, two thousand dollars per unit, for example. That's it's tough. That's that's tricky. I mean, Greg, I guess the question for you is this: this staff report seemed very like it's all good. You know, everything works, and um, I mean, what what discussion occurred? amongst the planning department about these implications. I mean, I think every single one of us has, has raised some, you know, level of, of concern about the implication of this on other things, things other than the school district. Um, did that conversation occur at the city? Did Sure did, it did. You know, and, and, I mean, like, what, why do you guys feel that this, what is really a significant increase, um, it, isn't, I mean, are there any, were there any concerns raised about the broader implication of this? There, there were, we discussed it at length. Um, and I, I think what it came down to for us was um, part of or the, the philosophical point or however you want to phrase it, that um, new growth needs to pay a fair share of the cost of the facilities that are going to be needed to serve that growth. And that, that shifting that burden to the existing taxpayers is not fair. Um, and, um, you know, that, that is the philosophy that we've been operating under for a long time, that new growth should help pay for the facilities that are needed to serve that growth, whether it's parks or roads or schools. Thank and, you. and, you know, we, we, I understand the, the concern about the, the fees and the level of the fees and the impact on the cost of housing. And it's a balancing act. You're absolutely right. And if impact fees are certainly not perfect in terms of the way that they can be administered, um, but they're the best option that we have um, to assess the costs of these facilities to new development. Barbara? Okay, so impact fees are one-time fee that happens at the time of development, correct? Yes. And bonds are taxes that happened, happen every time we pay taxes, correct? Yes, if the voters approve a bond. So why are the building people passing on the cost of an impact fee to the renters? Renters pay rent every month when the builders only paid this fee once. That sounds like a good question for you, Ollie. <laughs> well, I'm not a landlord, um, but uh, Barbara, I think the idea is that if if um, the cost, so I'll try and describe how I believe 